Let's look at the exterior angles now. In this figure, I've got one, two, three, four, five. This must be a pentagon. It is a pentagon. It's not regular, um, but it is a convex figure. Here it's caved in. That doesn't work. It's convex, and the sum, these five exterior angles, one per vertex, add up to 360 degrees. So let's, um, well, let's suppose we're dealing with a um, regular polygon. This is a decagon. So all the inside angles are the same, but so are all the outside angles. Well, they all add up to 360, and there's 10 of them, so they must be 36 degrees apiece. It's that easy. Now, just for fun, let's suppose I was going to say, instead of a decagon, I'll increase the number of sides. Double it. 20 sides. How about 40 sides? You can see the angles, the exterior angles will still be 360, in this case, divided by 40. And the figure looks, starts to look a lot like a circle. Well, that's how I remember 360 degrees. 360 degrees, and look at that, approximating a circle. While we're at it, let's define exterior angles. Well, this is all you do. Extend each side, make a ray out of it, and you can see the exterior angles forming. Now, I'm drawing one for each vertex, but I could extend the sides the other way. So I could see I have two for each vertex. In each case, in this example, one and five are vertical, two and six are vertical, three and seven are vertical. So you can see, in each case, I'm going to generate two for each vertex, or there would be two n exterior angles. The blue angles are all exterior angles in this convex polygon, and they add up to 360. So, let's add them up. And we can, well, we can simplify this equation a little bit. Let's combine these numbers. I'm going to drop the degree sign here. I'm just solving now for a variable. Everything is in degrees. Subtract the 162 from both sides, divide by 3. My variable is equal to 66. So that means, well, let's go a little farther with this. We have the measurement of these two angles. So let's see how we handle a regular polygon. We all recall regular means congruent sides. And more importantly here for the angles, congruent angles. It must be, by nature, it must be convex. We're going to see two methods for finding the measure of the interior angles as well as the exterior angles. And we'll start right here with a very straightforward but not terribly clever method. We'll use the formula we just learned. We know that this figure has 540 degrees of interior angle measurement. And I could divide each of those, or that 540, that sum, divide it by 5, and you can see I've got 108 there, I've got 108 here, I've got 108 here, 108 here. Hey, this is pretty easy, isn't it? That works out okay. Now let's extend the rays to generate exterior angles, one per vertex. And now we're going to do something, well, a little bit different. We're going to say the supplement of 108 is 72. Oh, 72, 72, 72, 72, and over here, 72. And a quick check there, these two add up to 180 since the angles are, of course, linear pairs. Well, that's how we got it in the first place. So this method, we solve for the blue angles and then we use the linear pair to find the red angles. That's good, but it's not as slick as we could do. We could do this. Let's start with the exterior angles, red first. I'm going to say the sum of the exterior angles in any convex polygon is 360. So if they're equal, I can divide by n, the number of sides. 
and it's going to work out perfectly. Well, 360 divided by 5 is 72. Hey, that's a lot faster. Well, that gives me the exterior angles, and now we're going to go the other way. We'll just take the supplement for the interior angles. So you see we never had to calculate the total for this of interior for this figure. Solve for the exterior first and then just take the supplement for the interior angle. Now that we know the clever way for finding the interior and exterior angles of a regular polygon, let's take on this regular 18 gone. Oh, what a terrible name. Um, well, octodecagon, octokaidagon, well, you'll see these other words. We're not going to use them in this class. This is just an 18 gone. Well, the red angles, the ones on the outside, 360 degrees, divided evenly by 18. Each of those ex exterior angles is 20 degrees. Therefore, each interior angle is 160. Just take the supplement. It's that easy. Well, how about a regular polygon with 90 sides? Here's a scale drawing of it, and there's a name for the trivia buffs, Enocontagon, but we're going to do the same thing we did before. Easy method. Find the exterior first. Well, the exterior is just 4 degrees, and of course, the supplement of 4 is 176. Now let's work backwards. We're going to find how many sides each of these regular polygons has. In the case first, in exercise 24, when I'm given the measure of an interior angle, or as in 25, an exterior angle. They're really pretty easy. We're going to do them together so we can compare. Here we go. 24 is actually a little trickier. We have an extra step. We know the measure of an interior angle. Let's, well, find the measure of exterior. Just take the supplement. They're a linear pair after all. So now we can then substitute into this equation and just like we did before you know how to work your um, you know your algebra and you know how to work proportions. We're going to swap the n and the 24. If you don't know how to do that you really need to brush up on the old algebra skills. There we go. n equals 15. n has to be a whole number. If you don't get a whole number, you made a mistake, or the problem just shouldn't be. This is a number of sides. It can't be a decimal. So let's just say, um, I suppose we could name it if you're into those funky names, and then we're going to clean this up and draw a picture. Again, if 156 degrees on the inside, 24 degrees on the outside, and therefore 15 sides. Now. By comparison, on the right, well, we can skip one step because I've got the exterior angle. So I'm just going to say the exterior angle is 360 divided by n. I rearranged my arithmetic. So 360 divided by n, does that equal a whole number? I sure hope so. It equals 40. So it's a tetracontagon. Well, the names are for you trivia buffs, and we're just going to say, get rid of that, and there's our picture. So here, 15 sides on this regular polygon, 40 on this one. Now let's keep going with this idea of finding the measure of an interior angle of a regular polygon and write it in function notation. It says right here, we're going to write the function h of n, where n is the number of sides in this regular polygon, and h of n is going to be the measure of a single interior angle. So, what do we need? We need this. We know this expression already. 360 over n, that's how we found the measure of an exterior angle, and then of course we took the supplement. So, h of n will look like this. Hmm, that's pretty straightforward. 180 minus this 360 over n, and that means that's going to take the supplement of the exterior angle. h of n, then, represents the interior angle. Now let's answer parts b and c. Well, now in part b, we're going to take our function here, and let's do two things. First, evaluate 
this function at n equals 9. That is to say, h of 9 equals 180 degrees minus 360 divided by 9, or 180 minus 40. This means that in this nonagon, regular nonagon, each exterior angle is 40 degrees, and each interior angle, 140. Well, that's straightforward. But let's try this one, a little bit more exciting. What value of n, or in other words, h of which n is going to yield 150? Well, we can solve this with some simple algebra. Let's first subtract the 180 from both sides of the equation. And now I say, hmm, I've got negative on both sides of the equation. Let me just multiply both sides by negative 1. And again, I've got an n in the denominator. Just like we've done so many times before, we know that we can switch. We can swap these two, our property of proportions or multiplication division. However you do it, you've got to be able to rearrange that equation into this. Now, this is pretty convenient because I've got 360 degrees Degrees divided by degrees, the units disappear. And what am I left with? I'm left with n equals 12, a dodecagon. So this polygon, regular polygon, has exactly, well, has 12 sides. It's got to be exactly 12. If I got a decimal here, I made a mistake. Because a polygon can't have a decimal number of sides. It's got to be a whole number. And finally, let's evaluate our function at values of n from 3 through 8, and we're going to list them as ordered pairs, well, where it's going to be n comma h of n. So that there they are, 3 through 8. Let's graph them. Where the horizontal axis represents n, the number of sides, and the vertical axis, well, h sub n, or the measure of the interior angle and interior angle of a regular polygon. I've got here n from 3 through 8, and I've added 9 through 10 just to make it interesting. And you can see as n increases, h sub n increases, but the rate of increase slows down, 3 to 4, growing by 30 degrees. Look at this, by the time 9 through 10, 4 degrees. So it's going to be non-linear. Now, because of that, you're going to have a hard time representing it on conventional graph. That is, I want values maybe up to 10 here, but I need 144 in the vertical. That's crazy. Not going to fit here. So we're going to split this graph. We're not going to use square coordinates, but rather rectangular. We're going to change the vertical scale. Watch this. Let's take this and pull it down it will change shape, but it's going to give us at least some picture. And it's going to start to appear. And there we have it. Now, I know we really shouldn't, I really shouldn't be drawing the curve. After all, the graph really is just these discrete points right there. That's 360. This is 490. 5, 108. 6, 120, but I drew the curve just because I thought it was pretty and you could see, you could then see the trend and you see it as n increases, h sub n is increasing but at a lesser rate.